rich and the poor and the several tiers of our uh, justice system. Anybody want to comment on all the good liberal politicians of San Francisco who are all oh so politically concerned about people on the bottom? This is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. We have breaking news for you. A 15-year-old Danish girl who hooked up with a Muslim that she met at a refugee center cut her mother's head off after spending hours watching ISIS videos of the decapitations of the two British hostages, David Haynes and Alan Henning. Lisa Borsch, 15, planned to join ISIS in Syria with her Iraqi throwback boyfriend after the killing. Sentenced to nine years in prison for murdering her mother. Danish court heard that the teen planned to join ISIS in Syria with her Iraqi boyfriend, Bakhtiar Mohammed Abdullah. His fingerprints were also found at the scene of the crime. She met Abdullah at a refugee center near her home. How's that for multiculturalism? How is that for the multiculturalism that the psychotic liberals are trying to foist upon the American public? WABC Mark on the issue of the San Francisco case. I understand you're an attorney. Are those tapes admissible in your mind or not? Uh, unfortunately, legally speaking, I believe they are, although I think that, you know, the rest of the world would like them for not to be. It's his tapes under the Fourth Amendment, search and seizure. Unfortunately, the police need a warrant for those. But wait, but Mark, my lawyer, Dan Horowitz, who, who's represented uh, the young lady who was married to Mel Gibson, says the opposite is true. He said that the police, that the police, if the recordings would inevitably have been discovered anyway, suppression is not the remedy. Well, unfortunately, I think the key fact in this case is that it was his. It belonged to him. It was his security cameras. It wasn't a public or belonging to somebody else. That's but isn't it interesting how the average person listens to this and says, listen to lawyers arguing why what's black and white in front of people's eyes has to be thrown out even though it's, it actually happened? Now we have laws that, that suppress actual visual evidence of a crime being committed? Exactly. I think it's ridiculous. And you know something? To, try, to tie it in with the debate tonight... Donald Trump is the only candidate who has his own money and doesn't need to have other people in his pocket. This would never have happened if this guy didn't have politicians in his pocket. And who, who, which, who got, you mean the venture capitalist and his connection to the, to the old girls network here in San Francisco? Correct, and the prosecutor as well. Okay, well, thanks for calling out of New York. Uh, I'd like to get Dan Horowitz on the show in the next hour. If Dan's listening, you can call him in for a few minutes to explain the law, because no one can believe this. You know, if a cop, for example, is tried for a crime and found innocent, tell me what happens next. Remember what happened in, in Ferguson? After the cop was found innocent, what did Eric Holder do? He brought the case against him in a federal court, right? Didn't he bring a case? He said, well, oh no, that we had a miscarriage of justice. We're going to try him again. Why is there no such maneuver here in a case like this? You say, well, the other one was a violation of civil rights of a black individual. Civil rights case, Justice Department. Well, to anyone looking at this, it looks like a, uh, a civil rights case because a woman's rights were violated and that she was beaten, allegedly. And on videotape, and the tapes are thrown out? Now, it doesn't matter to me. I don't know any of these people personally. I have no axe to grind one way or the other. But what worries me is that when you have this level of lawlessness in a city where an illegal immigrant can kill Kate Steinle and then have the nerve to say he found the gun under a bench and it went off by itself, I can tell you as I sit here, the power players in this city are working behind the scenes to make sure that illegal alien does not serve a day for murder one. I can guarantee you. And that's why the American people are all frightened right now about this corrupt Democrat uh, socialist machine that is ruining America's judicial system. What questions would you ask Hillary Clinton if you could ever get her to come out from hiding? Anybody have any good questions? I have such great callers right now, and I don't know who to take, truthfully. Matthew on WABC, what's on your mind? Go ahead, please. You know, Dr. Savage, to get to the point, entrepreneur, this entrepreneur is obviously, like you're saying, is being protected. 
uh, you know, I used to work for a small little newspaper in Burnsville, North Carolina, and actually saw firsthand what a uh, elected official, like a sheriff, can do to a town and hide its politics if it sees if it's obviously the sees fit for them. And it's sad. It really sad that it's come down. Well, we have a sheriff in San, San Francisco called Murky Kami, who was arrested on a domestic violence charge, served time, a very small amount of time, and now a sheriff again. What kind of city is this where where the people look up to a sheriff in the city and he's still sheriff after a, a case like that? This is the most lawless city in the United States of America, and it's not comedic anymore. Yeah. Matthew, stay in the line. I'm sending you a copy of my forthcoming bestseller, Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture, where all holes are, are barred. They're taken off. All stops are pulled out. I have an 8,000-word chapter on Lenin's Pope where the bouncer came from, how he became a priest, how he became a bishop, how he was handpicked to become the pope, how the pope is connected to Obama, how the pope and Obama are connected to the entire green movement. 8,000 words on Lenin's pope and government zero. Nobody has done what I've done in that book, and that's only one chapter of 10. It's 100,000 words. You're not going to want to miss it. If you've bought any of my books, and that would be a lot of people, this is the one you have to have. Government Zero, available on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com. When I come back, we have another big hour right here on the Savage Nation. We'll talk about all the stories of the day, especially the debate. And I would advise Donald Trump to have not appeared. Of course, he didn't ask me, but I would tell him anyway. Don't appear. You don't need to be there with the Lilliputians. They're only being used as stooges to attack you by the liberal Republican and the Democrat Socialist establishment, Donald. You've got it made. It'll be you versus Bernie. Capitalism versus communism. 8515. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. The shortest straw has been pulled for you. Boy, does that say it all. That's what Obama's done to this nation. He's pulled the shortest straw for America and tells us America's great. That's where the country is melting down because of this crazy man. Now, we have a debate tonight, and I've mentioned it over and over again ad nauseum, uh, that the debate is not the issue. The issue is why Hillary refuses to debate. The issue is why the American people would vote for a Democrat when it is such an autocratic party that it will not debate anyone, even their own party will not debate itself. What has she got to hide? Why are they permitting, permitting this Yenta from New York, Debbie Wasserwoman Schultz, to prohibit uh, Hillary Clinton from debating? Why will this faltering front runner, who is being protected by this uh, Yenta, why in the world will the Democrats ever vote for anyone like her again when she's got so much to hide? Why is it that a guy like even Martin O'Malley, who's as liberal as they come, wants to debate and they won't debate her? Why is it that Trump, I'm sorry, why is it that Biden won't be allowed to debate her? Because she's got a lot to hide. She's got a lot to hide, and she knows that if anyone debated her, it would be all over. Why won't they uh, have a debate between Bernie the commie Sanders, O'Malley, Biden, Gore, and Hillary? Because she'd be knocked out in the first round. And now we look at the Republican debate, and we know what the RNC and the Better Business Bureau and the Club for Growth has done. They chose the most anti-American network, a laughably anti-American network, CNN, to hold a debate. And then they pick an unknown talk show host and a party hack, uh, a party hack stooge like Jake Tapper, who's a woodpecker on steroids, to ask the questions. So there's nothing we can do about it other than I would have advised... Donald Trump not to appear because it's only going to be a witch hunt tonight. They're trying to set up a, a thing between Donald Trump and Ben Carson. The same people who ridiculed Ben Carson three weeks ago are now saying Ben Carson is God 
because they have black versus white. This is how racists operate. This is how the racist news network has uh, made a living all along. If it burns, it earns. You get the picture. So they're doing the same thing tonight. They're all going to attack Trump. That's what Lilliputians will do. And I, I don't think Trump needed to be there. He's so far ahead, he shouldn't have shown up. Frankly, he should have pulled a Clinton on them. There should have been an empty slot so everyone could say, oh, look, Donald Trump's afraid of us. Then all of the CNNites could say, look at that, Donald Trump wouldn't show up, he's afraid. But meanwhile, they'd be noticing Donald Trump and what, what he stands for. So let's analyze for a minute before I take your calls of what would you ask Hillary Clinton if you could ask her a question. What is it that Donald Trump stands for? What do we know he actually stands for? Many people say he's a flip-flopper, he's really a Democrat, he's for this, then he's against it, then he's this, and then he's that. Then why is he so popular? I mean, we've had other flip-floppers before who never had gained any traction. What is it about Donald Trump that has him gaining traction? I know him personally. I don't mean we have uh, dinner together. I've told you, I have for full disclosure, that I have a home in Florida, which I rarely go to, but when I do in the winter, I often go over to the Mar-a-Lago Club, of which I am a member, and it's often around Christmas time, and when it happens, which is once a year, I will inevitably run into Donald Trump. And I've had a few great conversations with him, and I think he's a wonderful man, frankly. I've met his family. I know things that, you know, I don't know why people don't talk about his incredible hiring policies. I don't know why they don't talk about his support for Israel. I don't know why they don't talk about any of these things. But I do know those are the reasons that he's hated by the GOP establishment and by the Democrats in particular, who hate Israel, voted against Israel, voted to, to shaft Israel, supported Obama as an attacks on Israel. So you can understand the lobbying going on behind the scenes amongst the Democrats and the Republican sellouts against Trump. He wants to build a wall with Mexico. You can't say I'm against it. In 2007, I published a book, in, I think 2010, entitled Trickle Up Poverty. One of my uh, platforms in my 17-point plan was build a wall with Mexico. Make the illegals build it, pay them union rates, and then, and then uh, repatriate them. It's right in my book. So it's not new to me. So many of the policies that Donald Trump is uh, espousing came from my books. It's not that he got them from my books. I'm not saying that. Maybe he did. Maybe one of his aides read it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. They're not unique to me, but they're pretty well spelled out in my books more articulately than anyone else at the time. And it wouldn't matter if they were my ideas. They're good ideas. They're American ideas. It's what most Americans want, which is why my books have been bestsellers. And uh, so what they're doing to Donald Trump is something I'm very, very familiar with. Why am I very familiar with the attacks on Donald Trump, the names they're calling him? Because for 21 years, I've suffered in silence. Well, not in silence. I've suffered excommunication. I've suffered social ostrac being a social outcast, to be very honest with you. I have suffered in many ways you could never imagine. I've paid a very high price for my prominence and success. I'm not complaining. I'm not Glenn Beck. I'm not going to talk about his hemorrhoids. I'm not going to start crying about God. Don't, don't expect that from me. I don't play that game. God's been very good to me. You know, every time I want to complain or whine, I think about what God's given me, not what he hasn't given me. That's all I can tell you. And when I do pray, I ask for a few things which I won't tell you about because you're not God. You're only my, you're only my audience. I think a man's prayers are between him and God, no one else. But the thing is, I know what it's like to be unfairly attacked. I know what it's like to be called names. I know what it's like to be uh, thrown out of uh, the social order because your opinions don't mesh with those of the power structure. So what Donald Trump is saying is what the American people believe in a great majority. Even Democrats want the borders closed. Even Democrats want fair taxation. Even Democrats want the Muslim invasion stopped. Even Democrats want the illegal crime wave curtailed. So on that issue alone, he could become president, and I hope he does. He doesn't need many issues. The illegal alien crime wave unto itself is an issue to catapult him into the White House. New data shows a frightening toll of illegal immigrant criminals. It's, it's beyond anything you could imagine. Drug trafficking, kidnapping, murder. All of these cases are enormous. In Florida, in Illinois, in Arizona, in California, we have the data. A rare window into the public data that was put together 
by Malia Zimmerman of Fox News based on government data that has been hidden on the immigrant crime.